last week, I looked at what it means to switch to an electric car, but was disappointed to find that electric vehicles did not guarantee a green in Singapore. They have lower emissions than petrol or diesel vehicles, but are not zero emissions. Because so long as you take electricity from a grid, you are reliant on fossil fuels. This week, I dig a little deeper. I want to find out if there really are zero emissions vehicles. And what the future of transport looks like. It's a mission that will take me beyond Singapore shores. For that, I'm starting here. In the far ends of eastern Singapore, an experiment is underway. I'm getting on board a bus. So this bus is just like other public buses we're familiar with. It runs on diesel, which will be phased out by 2040. But there is one thing that is different about it. Hey Andy. Hi. We came up with the idea of putting some solar panels on the roof. Um, so instead of the alternator having to recharge the battery, the power from the solar panels takes over from the alternator and do the job of charging the batteries. In a combustion engine, the alternator acts like a generator that charges the battery. But with solar panels, some of the energy required to do this comes from the sun. So the windscreen wipers and the lights of this bus are powered by solar energy. Essentially, this bus I am riding is a part diesel, part solar powered bus. And there are only two of them in Singapore. How does that help make this bus more environmentally friendly? It reduces the amount of fuel that the bus uses, so huh? the, the fuel consumption improves. We expect that it will be somewhere in the region of 3 or 4 percent. And that, that, in carbon terms, that's about uh, 3.7 tonnes of carbon that we won't be emitting. So, right, so that makes right. a real difference. Wow. But those solar panels, are they enough to power up the bus? Uh, well, at the moment, the technology just would not allow you to generate enough power to actually power a whole bus all day. There's just not enough roof space to put enough panels oh. on to generate the amount of power that you would need to do that. Do you ever think we'll, we'll get there, where eventually the solar powers will be able to generate more electricity? I think that's, that's a very long way off. So maybe the next step would be to actually use solar panels to charge batteries at the depot, uh, and then use those batteries overnight to charge the electric buses back up. With sunshine all year round, Singapore has what seems like perfect conditions for harnessing clean energy like solar to power our vehicles. But from what I've just learned, more time and technology are needed before buses can run purely on energy from the sun. But there is a country that is ahead on the road to cleaner energy transportation. I'm heading to China. Well, not really. My colleague Olivia Xiong, also our Beijing correspondent, will be showing me the future of clean transport. So Olivia, it looks like we'll be taking a bit of a backseat here now. Uh, uh. Okay, got it, Steve. We are headed out right now. Chufa ba. To tell China's journey into the future, I'm headed to Shenzhen. This city of 12 million people lies south of the capital Beijing, in the province of Guangdong. In 2017, it became the first in the world to have a fully electric public transport system. So I'm downtown here in Shenzhen, a city that's known for several things, including being a technology hub, as well as having a youthful population with many from around the country choosing to come here to live and work. And there's one more thing as well. If you were to have a look at the taxis and buses on the roads here, well, none of them are powered by petrol or diesel. In fact, all of them are fully electric. I have to take a ride on one of these electric vehicles. So this bus that I'm on is one in Shenzhen's massive fleet of more than 16,000 
fully electric buses. The push to electrify public transport had been rolled out across China, including in the capital. But it is only in Shenzhen where the buses and taxis are 100% electric. Now, just have a listen. It's a difference you can actually hear. This is a metropolis of 12.5 million people and it's surprisingly quiet. This is because there is no roar from combustion engines from any of the public transport in this city. And the buses aren't the only things that are run by solar energy. There are taxis powered by solar energy that can run up to 400 kilometres. I'm going to check out how that is done. In this depot, this energy is coming from the solar panel over here. I'm here at a bus depot run by the Shenzhen Bus Group and they have thousands of buses and taxis that run hundreds of kilometres on the Shenzhen roads every day. All of them are fully electric and I do wonder how are they being charged on such a massive scale while also being environmentally friendly. Showing me is Shenzhen Bus Group's Hali Liao. In Shenzhen, we actually have 140 depots and in all of these depots, we have the charging piles sufficient to power all of the buses throughout the day and night. Are we talking about fossil fuels and coal that generates this electricity? In Shenzhen, actually 70% of the electricity is generated by either renewable energy such as solar, wind or a nuclear plant, which is uh, only 40 miles away from here. We are also looking into trialing a hydrogen bus line in Shenzhen as well. Uh, additionally, we are um, investing in solar panels and to install the solar panels onto uh, the roof of our charging depots in order to convert them into a microgrid system that can power our buses and vehicles as well. So we are now at this depot where some taxis from the Shenzhen Bus Group fleet come to get charged every day and some of them are getting the energy from, yes, the sun. But unlike Singapore, these vehicles do not have solar panels attached to them. Instead, a new solution, I'm told, is being tested. In the current depot that we are in, we can house around 100 taxis. And in this depot, this energy is coming from the solar panel over here. So during the day, we collect the energy from the sun and it gets transferred into the battery storage system over here. This is a microgrid system that we have built from a used bus battery and our taxis can get charged during the day and at night uh, from the charging piles. How far would they be able to run with the solar energy? So to fully charge one of the vehicles, the mileage is around 300 to 400 kilometers. For our buses, one fully charged bus can run up to about 300 kilometers. And most of our buses run around 250 kilometers each day. So one fully charged bus can cover a whole day of operation. So currently, how many taxis can be charged fully with the solar energy that's generated here? With the panel available here, we can power around six taxis in one day. While Shenzhen Bus Group has succeeded in supplementing electricity for its buses and taxis with clean energy from the sun, fully charging all 6,000 electric buses and 5,000 taxis with renewable energy is still a challenge. Current infrastructure does not allow enough solar energy to be generated or stored and the cost of increasing this capacity is too high for now. So we're still not at zero emissions. But Halley mentioned one more clean energy vehicle that Shenzhen Bus Group is exploring that holds promise for low-carbon travel. 
hydrogen buses. Well, that happens to be one we may one day see on Singapore's roads as well. And Steve's going to give us a preview of it. So guess what I'm driving? This is a vehicle that is powered by alternative low-carbon fuel. The only thing it emits is heat and water, which means there are no pollutants and zero emissions. Now, what kind of fuel am I talking about? Well, hydrogen. That's right, this buggy is powered entirely by hydrogen. Wow, so this has been powering the buggy. That's right. Jog Jaman is the CEO of Spectronic, a company that plans to unveil its own hydrogen fuel cell vehicle later this year. When will we see something like this powering vehicles on our roads? Well, we are rolling out a minibus in partnership with an automaker okay. later this year, powered by Spectronic's hydrogen fuel cell. But we already have electric buses on our road. Why would you say hydrogen is better than an electric vehicle? It is not better, it is different. If it is a private vehicle and you can do overnight charging, then a battery electric vehicle is good enough. So for hydrogen fuel cell, it's really useful for fleet vehicles, commercial vehicles like uh -huh. buses, vans, taxis, ride-sharing vehicles where you cannot afford to stop for many hours to, to charge the battery. So how does this actually work? Why don't we go to our lab and I'll show you. Oh, so what is this? These are the main components that you will find in a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. Uh -huh. uh, in this case, this is the fuel cell that will be powering our minibus. This whole thing? That's correct. So you have hydrogen fuel stored in this gas tank. Oh! Let me turn it on to show sure. you. So what's happening right now is the hydrogen gas is coming from the tank. Uh -huh. through these pipes into the fuel cell. And the fuel cell is converting it into electricity with only water and heat as the byproduct. I see, and the water comes out here. That's really quick. So it comes in here, straight away it converts, goes through this uh, sort of circuit. And the power comes out. Essentially, it's the hydrogen gas powering the vehicle with just water as its byproduct. How is the hydrogen produced? Is that also emissions-free? Um, at this moment, about 95% of the worldwide hydrogen gas production is still fossil fuel based, but uh -huh. that will improve in the future with continuous drop in the renewable energy prices like solar and wind. Okay, so for now, it's kind of similar to the electric vehicle in the sense that the energy or electricity produced to recharge the vehicle is also not fully emissions-free. That's right. I came here looking to finally see a zero emissions vehicle but it turns out even hydrogen powered vehicles aren't zero emissions because well hydrogen is currently mostly produced using fossil fuels so perhaps the question to ask then is among electric solar powered and hydrogen which will win the low emissions rate electric hydrogen fuel cell, and even solar power. Now, all these are cleaner energy that could one day be powering the vehicles on our roads, if not already. But I've learned that none are really zero emissions, just lower emissions. So perhaps the question to ask is not which of these can contribute to no emissions, but which contributes the least. Raka Sharma is an energy analyst with almost three decades studying and advising on energy and climate change policies. He's dropped in to help me make sense of all the cleaner energy transport options I've come across. So, we've been looking at different types of vehicles. I mean, we've got your electric vehicle, partially solar-powered buses, which I sat in, and the hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. If you had to pick one now, which would you consider the most environmentally friendly? Purely in terms of environmental footprint, yeah. I would say uh, all three are equal because they are all zero tailpipe emissions. Okay, when you say zero tailpipe, as in the kind of uh, 
pollutions coming out of the exhaust pipe. Pollutions pipes. coming out of exhaust pipe. So they are all, they are all. Uh, there is no carbon emission coming from the tailpipe. Okay. So they are all zero in that sense. So if you want to compare the environmental footprint of different types of cars, mm -hmm. the the ideal metric is to look at uh, life cycle emissions footprint. Life cycle emissions take place at each stage of the car's development. From the sourcing of materials to the production, operation and disposal of the vehicle and its parts. Including the lithium-ion batteries that charge our electric cars. So it sounds almost virtually impossible to have a zero emissions end-to-end -end process. I think it is not necessary to go down that path. By moving to an electric car, you can uh, get rid of uh, tailpipe emissions. Okay. And the remainder emissions, which is 10-20%, uh, you can offset. Simple example would be you go to a supermarket, yeah. you can carry your own kind of uh, uh, bag mm -hmm. so that you can avoid one plastic bag. Mm -hmm. So that way you can look at the entire life cycle of, uh, of a particular activity. It's a challenge aiming for zero emission transport because it actually depends on the entire supply chain. But what has caught my attention is the question of what happens to these batteries in these electric vehicles when their lifespan has run its course. I want to find out if lithium-ion batteries can impact the environment negatively at the end of their lives. My colleague Olivia in Beijing has come across information on this. Environmental organization Greenpeace has highlighted the need to properly recycle what would be an impending tidal wave of decommissioned EV batteries in China. So have we, in the process of solving one problem, created another? To find out, Olivia has arranged to meet Greenpeace at this electronics recycling shop in Beijing. There will be more than 12 million tons EV battery retired in 2030. And in China, this number will hit 7 million tons in the next 10 years. So it's a huge amount of electric vehicle batteries. But what is the impact on the environment since we're talking about a huge amount of lithium ion batteries from these electric vehicles? The environmental problem of the lithium and battery can be both from the extraction part and also the recycling part. In the recycling phase, uh, if the recyclers uh, don't treat the uh, batteries in a, in a proper way, uh, the heavy metals will leak into the environment, which will contaminate the soil and water. If these batteries are not disposed properly, it could affect our health, is that what you're saying? Let's uh, take the electrolyte as an example. If the electrolyte leaks into the environment, it can be decomposed into hydrogen fluoride, which is highly corrosive, and it can damage uh, human health in a very short time. So not only does the manufacturing of batteries strain supplies of raw materials like lithium and cobalt, heavy metals found in batteries can leak into the environment when not disposed of properly. Hey Steve, so how's the search for carbon-free transport going? Well, not so great actually. I realise getting zero emissions is also about looking at the entire life cycle. That needs to be sustainable, otherwise it's not really achievable. Yeah, and it is surprising that sometimes the solution can create even more problems and with electric vehicles. The issue is used batteries like what we're seeing here in China, but Singapore is early on in its electrification journey. Perhaps it can find a solution? Maybe. In fact, that is what I'm just about to go in search of. Ah, great. Well, you go ahead and do that. I'll leave you to it. In the meantime, I'm going to head home on a truly zero carbon transport. The good old bicycle. See you. In Singapore, my search for a solution for end-of-life EV batteries has brought me here. The lifespan of a modern EV battery is estimated to be around 10 years, and I'm curious if they can find a new lease of life after that. 
Now, this is a battery recycling facility that opened in Singapore this year. It's the first of its kind in not just Singapore, but also Southeast Asia. And I'm here to find out if we have what it takes to recycle batteries from electric vehicles on a large scale. Meeting me is Diana Ong. She oversees the recycling of lithium-ion batteries at this facility. Oh, this is the kind of battery I would find in my mobile phone, yes, laptop, laptop, I guess. Yes, tablets, anything. Are these similar to what you would find in an electric vehicle? Um, you know, it's not exactly similar, but uh, in this manufacturing facility, we are able to extract EV batteries as well. So as Singapore is moving towards electric vehicles by 2040, will you guys be able to also recycle batteries from electric vehicles? Yes, our R&D folks are working very hard in terms of uh, tweaking the mechanical and chemical process okay. to be able to cope with the recycling of EV batteries. So in time to come, we will be able to cope with the volume. And what is it recycled into? How many components are in this? Yeah, there's a lot of components. Why don't I show you downstairs? Several key minerals go into the making of lithium-ion batteries used in EVs. At the recycling process here at TES, three of these, lithium, cobalt and graphite, are extracted from the disposed batteries. This is a cobalt hydroxide. We also extract lithium, which is also a rare commodity and very valuable. How are they good in helping save the environment? Yeah, these are actually all rare earth, very precious, and it's getting scarce around the world. Because of the proliferation of laptops, mobile phones, tablets, yeah. a lot of uh, lithium as well as cobalt needs to be mined from the mines. Ah. And um, you know, for us, we recycle the used batteries into all this precious metal. And all this precious metal can be reused back into the manufacturing of lithium ion batteries again. Oh, so if I get a new phone, actually this stuff is going back into making that new battery. Precisely. But to run all this and to do this whole recycling process also requires a lot of electricity use, a lot of energy use, right? And that's also good for the environment. Oh, we have uh, solar panels installed on the rooftop and it's connected to our ESS energy storage system. Diana tells me TES not only uses renewable energy to power the recycling plant, it also uses repurposed electric bus batteries to store the solar energy generated from the sun so that it can be tapped into any time. And because the rare metals from EV batteries are being recycled and not disposed of in landfills, it poses no harm to our environment and health. So what does the future of transport look like? Well, it certainly holds a lot of promise, if we can fully tap on renewable energy sources. But what has been most eye-opening to me on this search for low-emissions transportation is that it doesn't just start and end with the vehicle. In fact, I found that it's crucial to also think about what produces the fuel for the vehicle, be that electricity or hydrogen, and what happens to its parts when they are no longer in use. Now, the last thing we want is for our greener transport solutions to become the next climate problem. So, with that being said, I've been inspired by Olivia in Beijing, and I'll be taking probably the lowest emission transport option available today. Bye!